Monitoring is a very important part of the CLNR project. Really, in many ways, it's actually the starting point for smart grids. It's the starting point for learning how to transform electrical networks and make them fit for purpose going forward towards 2030 and beyond. For the last 50, 60, 70 years, power distribution or the flow of electricity has generally gone from the high voltage network down towards the customer. Um, now, as low carbon technologies come along, there are different aspects to the flow of electricity which have changed and so customers now with PVs and the like on the, on the roofs of the houses can create their own electricity and sometimes that's going to cause the electricity or the flow of the power to go in the opposite direction and that creates certain issues on the network that we need to be on top of. If you have a static network where you understand what the generation is doing and you have a very good idea about how loads are behaving, what the customers are doing then you don't need a great deal of data because the models that you've built as part of your network tell you everything you need to know. However, these new generation types aren't static. It's not like a, a gas-fired station that generates the same amount of power day in, day out, day in, day out. So you need to be able to monitor the real-time status of equipment out on the network and bring that data back so operational engineers can make decisions about what to do with the network today. What you're witnessing is uh, the installation of uh, smart link boxes on behalf of Northern Power Grid. We, we excavate around live cables. We then hand dig once we get within a certain vicinity of, of the live apparatus. We then hand dig around then for the actual jointers to get their positions to do their bit live. Joint the smart boxing, the older boxes weren't pre assembled. Pre assembled, so we don't have to resin the ends up. So it's, it's simpler, plus these ends are made off for us, you know what I mean? Good kit, it's easy to work with. Well, ordinarily and historically, the type of equipment we're installing today wouldn't be used for this particular function. In this instance, we've got it on the end of networks where, historically, it's always been used to connect two pieces of network together. These new devices give us the opportunity to see in a real-time situation exactly what's happening at any particular location on the network. So we can have it at the, at the front end, in the centre or at the extreme end of any, any particular LV network. We are particularly interested in this site because of the equipment that is, that is on the network at present. We have, we have heat pumps on this small rural network. Uh, we're interested in the characteristics of, uh, of those heat pumps. Um, we have a monitor on back at the substation and we have a monitor now on, on each of the feederways out of the substation at the extreme ends so we can see any, any differences between those two monitoring devices. We're at Willowbridge substation and what we've got is a substation monitor that is monitoring power quality on the substation buzz bars and it's monitoring power flows on two of the outgoing LV ways at the substation plus ambient temperature and transformer temperature. We've got current on the, on the three ways and neutral. We've got the real power, reactive power, and power power are all monitored there. Maximum railway voltage, and current load on the transformer KVA. And then we can look at 24 hour history data. So this is looking at the current on phase one in the last 24 hours on that substation. The equipment that's installed in the substations is very similar to what gets installed in the link boxes. We're using the same power meters as you would find in the link box and the same Envoy communications hardware. There are a couple of problems you have when installing equipment like this. One is to get um, a voltage into the equipment and the other is to get um, current signals into it. For the current signals on this site, we're using a micro Rogowski coil. This is a compact device that can be fitted easily in locations where space is really tight. It doesn't require an outage. It can be fitted by an engineer with a pair of LV insulated gloves, meaning that a site can be installed typically in half a day or less. This is the first time really that anybody has monitored a substation in anywhere near as much detail as this. Currently, DNOs know nothing about what happens beyond their primary substation and it's really um, going to be very interesting to have a look at the data and see what's actually going out on the network um, as opposed to what the theory says should be going on. 
So one of the key aspects of having the monitoring fitted on a distribution network is understanding the effects of the low carbon technologies that are fitted to it. Now, there, there are many effectors um, from those types of devices that, that cause us issues. They draw a lot of current, um, they, they cause us some harmonics, um, they cause us some issues with the actual loading of the network. They can cause localised voltage issues. They can cause issues back on the cables, they can cause issues back at the substation as well. It all depends on the size of the network and how they're connected. One of the challenges with all this data is what you do with it. So, for example, if we look at the load profile over a day in a substation, we might typically collect one and a half thousand readings across the day. It makes more sense to look for immediate alarms and report those the instant they happen. But the rest of the data, you just collect that and you report it perhaps at the end of the day as a single load profile, a single curve that can then be very readily interpreted by, by an engineer um, when he's looking uh, at that part of the network. So if we can capture just the information that's really useful and, and transmit that, then there's a, there's a higher probability that the, that the data will get through in a timely fashion and we won't, we won't cause log jams when we most need the data during storm situations and so on. This is Smart Grid's laboratory here at Durham. We bring that real-time monitoring data in. We not only visualise that and look at it, we play it through our real-time digital simulation system. That allows us to run concurrently with the real events on the network. We can run those scenarios in this uh, Smart Grid's playground we have here. And what that means we can do is we can look at anticipated problems as well as current problems in this laboratory. So we can take the real data and use that to run a scenario, but then improvise, adapt, and take that forward in time. We then have to try to make some insights that are statistically robust. And then you can say, what does that mean? How does that make us change the way we design and operate electrical networks? What does that mean for our understanding of just how far we can go with the low carbon transition with the networks we have today? Do they need new network interventions? Do they need to be redesigned? Do, they, do we need new assets and to what extent? And ultimately that affects the cost that all of our customers pay on their electricity bills because they have to pay to keep the system fit for purpose within the UK. So we're using uh, enhanced voltage control, energy storage, real-time ratings, and we're knitting all that together with demand-side response. But all of that really is underpinned by monitoring. If we don't have the monitoring, we don't have the real-time knowledge of the system. If we don't have the real-time knowledge of the system, we can't intervene in the network in a way that's helpful and relevant to what's happening at that particular point in time. The outputs of this monitoring project will, will give us a, a whole set of data which we can use um, to, to create the new the design tools for the future. The benefit from having this monitoring and feeding back into the wide area controller that we're developing as part of the customer-led network revolution will really be the first smart grid control system that we developed here in the UK, hopefully for deployment across the entire world.